On this land, the Battle of Musgrove Mill took place. A small force of around 200 militia fought and defeated a larger force of 500 loyalists and provincial soldiers in a short but pivotal battle. This surprising patriot victory was a major turning point during the Revolutionary War. And a little less than a mile from here was another area in which the battle was fought. Today, it is home to one of the finest golf courses you'll find anywhere in upstate South Carolina. It also happens to be our course of the week. In an area rich with dogwoods, cedars, oaks, and walnuts along the Anori River in upstate South Carolina, the Arnold Palmer design fern was given a track of land, all told 315 acres from which to design a golf course. It turned out to be the perfect site for the creation of a championship style layout that is often recognized among Golf Week's 100 best modern courses in America and ranks number 19 on Golf Digest, the best golf courses in South Carolina. And for those who have had an opportunity to tee it up here, it is a voyage and experience golf enthusiasts will talk about for years to come. Located about 90 miles from both Charlotte and Asheville, the Palmer Design Musgrove Mill Golf Club is a private golf sanctuary. Not a single home encroaches the golf course. Musgrove Mill opened for play back in 1988 with a single purpose, promoting the integrity of the game, all while maintaining a profound respect for the natural wilderness of upstate South Carolina. You feel like you're in the mountains, you feel like you're away from everything but you're only 15 minutes from, from town. The course itself sits on land that was fought over during the American Revolution and features plenty of rolling terrain. You can imagine that uh, fighting a Revolutionary War out here, uh, there's a lot of hills and dales and, and the rivers. Today, there are different types of battles being fought on this land. Musgrove Mill has hosted almost every South Carolina Golf Association event, including the state amateur, mid-amateur, and four-ball championships, as well as the PGA South Carolina Open. And in 2017, we had the ACC championship out here. Is this a typical Arnold Palmer design? In some respects, yes. One of Palmer's design philosophies involved waste areas around green complexes. And when utilized, they seem to create island greens. There's only like 10 to 15 bunkers, actual bunkers that are around the holes out here. But it, you know, he wanted to keep it natural. You know, there's no signage out here. Everybody just knows where to go because they come down here and play often enough. So it's just a beautiful sanctuary. But the green complexes themselves, on average, are smaller than what we're used to seeing on a Palmer Design golf course. The biggest greens that we have are really cut into three little greens. There's a lot of, a lot of thought on how to putt these greens, um, so it is not a typical, you know, big green uh, Palmer setup. Another thing that sets Musgrove Mill apart from so many other courses, no two golf holes are alike. Each one has its own design traits, yet together they make up a perfect routing of 18 fun and challenging holes of golf. With its four sets of tees, this golf course would challenge the best ball strikers, while at the same time offer up a fun and rewarding round of golf for the higher handicap player. From the back walnut tees, this par 72 layout plays to 6,951 yards, while offering a course rating of 74.4 and a slope of 155. 
Moving it up to the oak tees, the mid-level player will find a good test of golf at just over 6,400 yards. And for the ladies, the forward dogwood tees play to 52-56. On the playing surfaces, you'll find Bermuda grass on the fairways, native fescue rough, and Pencross bent grass on the putting surfaces. Distance is not really a factor out here. This layout is a second shot golf course. It's not how far you hit the golf ball, it's how far you fly the golf ball. And the greens are receptive, but once again, if you miss a green, there's no bump and run shots. All the short game is in the air, so you need your 60 and your 58 and your 52 degree wedge to get around this place. And to score out here, you'll need to take advantage of the par fives. All four are scorable if you can string together three good shots from tee to green. It's got four terrific par threes. Um, and, and there's every hole out here in, in our club championship, every hole out here is birdieable. And every hole gets birdied during club championship. But every hole out here is a potential disaster as far as making a double bogey or a triple bogey or even more. So, so the key is to uh, plot yourself around this place, not try to do what you can't do, and take what Musgrove gives you. I mean, because bogey out here is not a bad score. Musgrove Mill Golf Club in Clinton, South Carolina. Designed by Arnold Palmer, owned and operated by McConnell Golf, and located in what is truly one of the best backdrops you could ask for to enjoy this great game of golf. This golf course has just got a special spirit to it, I think, that, that people just enjoy and, and love being with their, you know, their, their friends and their family. And, the golf course may beat them up just a little bit, but they can't wait to get back and try it again. Hi, I'm Mindy Boysen with Fit for Golf, Fit for Life, and we're here in Naples, Florida at Tiburon Golf Club. This is part three of our five-part series, Thoracic Rotation, which helps you get more club head speed and prevent injury. So exercise number three is a half kneeling position. Now I'm in a kneeling position right here. First of all, I'd like to see if you can get in this position. If this is tough to do, we're not gonna go to half kneeling. So we're gonna be up here like this. I want you to bring that club as high as you can to open up your chest and then see if you can rotate your rib cage to the right, rotate your rib cage to the left, and just see how that feels and see if you lose your balance. If that feels pretty good and you can do the kneeling club overhead exercise and get this club up, then bring one leg up. That's considered half kneeling. This can be a little bit more wobbly, but we're also working on our hip stability at the same time. So club over your head. Nice and tall. What you don't want are goalposts. So you want a nice V, nice and tall. Now I'm going to turn toward my right leg, which is my backswing because I'm a right-handed golfer. I'm going to try to keep this over my head where I'm still looking at you. I'm going to pulse it three times and I'm going to come back to center. Now external rotation would be my through swing with that right leg. You can turn your head if you want or keep looking forwards. And you can see that I'm rotating my upper body. Now I'm gonna show you the wrong way to do it. This is what I see a lot, of my, a lot of my golfers do. They bring it up, they have trouble, and then when they rotate, they keep rotating just the arms and their body stops. That is where we need more rotation. We can't just use our arms in our swing. So we want nice and tall, squeeze the glutes, engage the core. Exhale, one, two, and three. Come back to center. And then for external rotation, one, two, and three. And you wanna make sure that you do that with both legs. So let's try that. I'm gonna to go to my left. Okay, this would be my posting leg for a left-handed golfer. I'm gonna bring my arms up, inhale. I'm tucking my hips a little bit, thinking real, real tall through my ribs. 
Exhale, one, exhale, two, exhale, three. Inhale back to center, try external rotation. One, two, three. And I'm gonna show it to you one more time. Ready, inhale, tall, 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 tall. Exhale, one, two, three. That's your posting leg. Inhale, prepare, exhale, one, two, and three. Now, if you wanna make it just a little bit harder, I'll show you this quickly. We're gonna bring this club behind our backs. Your hands are gonna be right here. Now, you're gonna rotate. You're gonna see if you can keep this club. I'm cheating doing this. You're gonna see if you can keep the club on your rib cage. Now, I don't go very far. I have to work on my thoracic rotation. And then back to center, and then we're gonna turn, see how far we can turn the other way, keeping this club right at the bottom of your 12th rib. Just back and forth, back and forth, and I can feel that all across my core. And then the other side, see which side is easier, which side is harder, and what do you wanna focus on? The only way to get better is to focus on your weakness. Okay, half kneeling or kneeling, club overhead, or club behind back rotation. So for that exercise and more, visit my mobile app, Fit for Golf 50 Plus. You know, there are golf holes, and then there is this, hole number seven here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club. At 207 yards from the back tee, this is all anyone would want in a golf hole. Hole number seven here at Musgrove Mill is all you could ask for in a par three. It can play anywhere from 151 yards to 207 yards. As you can see, it's a pretty testy tee shot. You're taking on the Anuri River, and then there's a heavily wooded area to the left-hand side. And while finding the putting surface off the tee is imperative here at hole number seven, you could be faced with some pretty hairy putts if you end up on the wrong side of the dance floor. It's got the front section, it's got the back left section, and the back right section. If you come up short here at number seven, you want to do so to the left-hand side. And you certainly don't want to go long here either. Because it's an elevated green, and uh, years ago we had the waste area around those two trees behind it. We took that out just to make it a little bit easier and keep play moving. but. Uh, but it, it is a demanding hole, and, and making a par or a bogey on that hole, you're not going to back up on the field. The par 3 seventh here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club in Clinton, South Carolina. A true test of golf designed by the great Arnold Palmer. It's a special hole and, you know, brings the river into it, and it's, it's a picturesque hole also. Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Tallman. I'm the director of golf here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club on McConnell property. And the tip of the day today is learning how to get out of waste areas. Out here at Musgrove, as those people that know that played here, we've got about 12 waste areas around the 18 holes of golf. And the tough thing about waste areas is you got different consistencies of sand. You've got hard pan, you've got fluffy sand, and the key thing in a waste area is you can take the rocks out. You don't have to, you know, hit the rocks. And when you get set up, the most important thing is the equipment that you have. You don't want a club that's got too much bounce. Bounce on these wedges nowadays go from about four degrees to 12 degrees. So a 12 degree bounce in this tight waste area is not gonna help you, you're gonna swing. And this is the question that we get, how do we play this? So the important thing is that you do have the correct club. So right here, the loft doesn't matter that much, but the bounce matters. This is a 60 degree wedge with seven degrees bounce on it. So as I set up to it, the other thing that I can do is I can take a practice swing. No penalty for that. So as I set up, I want this club to be square I don't want to open it up because that adds bounce to the club. I want to set it up square behind the golf ball, about the middle of your stance, and let the club dig.
just like that. Best of luck on your next shot out of the waste area here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club. At 355 yards on the back tee, hole number 11 here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club is the shortest par four on this Arnold Palmer designed golf course. Now to do well here, you'll need to find that right spot in the fairway that will lead you hitting your most accurate short iron into this small, shallow green. Hole number 11 here at Musgrove Mill is a great little par four. I think it's one of the greatest short holes in the southeast. Number 11 plays downhill from tee to green. You don't want to hit it too far because, you know, you've got water in front of the greens. You need to know how far you fly the golf ball, not how far you hit the golf ball. And you certainly don't want to go too far to the left. However, you could make a mistake to the right-hand side and still be okay. Yeah, left is, is bad. If you hit the ball a little bit right, that hill is steep enough, well, it'll, it'll throw you back into the middle of the fairway if you've, if you've been good. And we all want to be good, but we want to be especially good when we hit our approach shot into the green here at hole number 11. Green falls from right to left and from back to front. It's got two little pot bunkers that are in front of that green and you've got to execute that wedge shot, you know, to keep it on that green. And while everyone would like to get a birdie here on this short par four, you can feel just as good walking off the green here with a par. Par is a great score there. I mean, when the pin is down left, if you anything that you hit on that green uh, to the center or just a little left to center will, will funnel down to the pin. So it's easy there if they put the pin back right. It's a little tougher. You don't, once again, you don't want to go over that green. You don't want to go left or right of that green. Owned and operated by McConnell Golf out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Musgrove Mill Golf Club is just that. It's a golf club. And for the members at McConnell Golf, this is their destination club and for a good reason. Owned and operated by McConnell Golf out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Musgrove Mill Golf Club is truly a hidden gem. We are a golf club and we cater to two people that love the game of golf. It's 18 holes of Arnold Palmer designed golf. Some of the best you'll find in upstate South Carolina is both fun and challenging to play. And when you're not playing golf, you can always work on your game here at the club's fully amenitized practice facility. We had people come out here to just practice. We've got one gentleman that comes down here from Rock Hill every day just to practice. Inside the clubhouse, you'll find a warm and inviting atmosphere. Also within the clubhouse, you'll find a fully stocked golf shop with a full line of golf apparel with the ever popular Musgrove Mill logo on it. Because it brings the Revolutionary War into a golf club. It's a really cool logo that, uh, that people love to wear and wear it with pride. And one of the great things about being a member of McConnell Golf that if you belong to a club in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, or Tennessee, you can play Musgrove Mill and stay on property in one of the cottages. The McConnell Golf owned and operated Musgrove Mill Golf Club in Clinton, South Carolina, a true gem of a golf course in the upstate. As you tee it up for your final time in your round here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club, you'll do so on a par four that is considered one of the toughest finishing holes in all of upstate South Carolina, if not the entire state itself. From the back walnut tee, the number two handicapped hole on the course plays to 452 yards. Now the key to having success here at hole number 18 is obviously getting distance off the tee. 
but it's also knowing where to place your tee shot in the fairway so that you find the speed slot. It's got a, an area out there in the middle of the fairway that if you carry it over the hill, it'll give you an extra probably 30 or 40 yards into that green, which really helps because it's a tough green to hit when you're hitting hybrid or two iron. On your approach shot, you'll be taking aim at a green that has three different tiers to it. Very receptive green, and, and it is, uh, you know, it's cut into three sections again. You got the front and the back right, and then the back left, and it's, it's a tricky little angle hitting, hitting shots into that, uh, that pin. The par 4 18th here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club in Clinton, South Carolina. A great finishing hole on this Arnold Palmer design layout. It's a demanding tee shot. I used to think that uh, if you had a two-shot lead, you were pretty safe in winning the tournament out there, but I found over the years you need three shots to make it safe. If you walk off there with a par, you are probably uh, one or two shots ahead of the field. We do want to give special thanks to Jeff Tallman and his entire staff here at Musgrove Mill Golf Club in Clinton, South Carolina. And to all the good folks at McConnell Golf who offer an unparalleled golfing experience in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee. I'm Alan Hunter for all of us here at Golf America. Hit them along and straight, and we'll see you next time.